The Pendine Finishing Plant located in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania is a producer of uh, industrial fabrics, uh, home fashions fabrics, and also apparel fabrics, uh, swimwear, intimate apparel, and other apparel products. Guilford Mills is headquartered in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we're a worldwide producer of uh, warp knit and woven products for the apparel, automotive, uh, home fashions, and industrial fabric markets. We employ about 5,000 people worldwide. Some of the other products that we produce at the Pendine Finishing Plant in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania are uh, fabrics for reverse osmosis spacer fabric and uh, spiral wound reverse osmosis elements. Um, also some geotextile fabrics. We also uh, produce home fashions fabrics for uh, some for uh, furniture. The processes we use at the Pendine Finishing Plant in Pine Grove are uh, dyeing. We uh, have atmospheric and pressure dye machines. Uh, we also uh, finish, we wash the fabric and we finish it on tenor frames, which are large drying ovens. We use those ovens to heat set the fabric and also to dry the fabric. And then we also have uh, mechanical finishes that we uh, perform on the fabric where we uh, nap it and shear it. Uh, that's to give it a, a, the correct feel and texture of the finished fabric and also suading and of course it's inspected, packaged, and shipped out to customers in roll form. The new Fabric Mac will affect the areas of dyeing and finishing uh, at this plant. Those are, the, those are the processes that will be included in the Fabric Mac. The Pen Dye and Finishing Plant is a minor source for HAP emissions as defined under the Clean Air Act Amendments of 1990. When the, when the Clean Air Act Amendments were first uh, promulgated in 1990, this plant was probably a major source of HAPs, uh, HAP emissions, um, being over 10 tons a year of HAPs. The plant undertook a, a project to replace a solvent-based uh, edge gumming material that was used in the finishing area on the tenor frames with a water-based uh, edge gum material. That was uh, completed in 1993 and it allowed the, the plant to reduce VOC emissions and also HAP emissions to minor uh, levels. And so it is allowing the plant to avoid uh, major threshold status uh, for, for HAPs and also for criteria pollutants. So the plant is a, is a synthetic minor source under, um, under Title V for criteria pollutants and also a minor source uh, of HAP emissions now. Guilford Mills is a member of ATMI, American Textile Manufacturers Institute, that's our trade association. And under ATMI, we're also a member of the program called Encouraging Environmental Excellence, or E3. And under that program, we've committed ourselves to continuous environmental improvement. We've also implemented an environmental management system whereby we um, look at all the impacts and aspects of our operations and commit ourselves to certain goals to, uh, to reduce our impact, to improve our performance continuously on an ongoing basis. Uh, we do annual compliance audits of all our facilities. Um, and there are several other points in, under the E3 program that we have to recertify to every year in order to remain a part of that program. One of the things that we do that has helped us to manage our, our happy missions is we use a, um, a form called a Voluntary Product Environmental Profile, or VPEP, which was developed by ATMI. And we, we require all of our vendors of dyes and chemicals to uh, complete these forms before we'll even uh, consider using a new dye or chemical in our process. And on that form, they have to tell us exactly what the HAP content of every product is. We use that information. We to calculate uh, potential HAP emissions from using that product. So that's the information we use to make a decision of whether or not to bring a new dye or chemical into the plant. And that's how we maintain our um, minor status under the, uh, for HAP emissions is uh, through that. So that's part of our environmental management system to do that. After the edge gum is applied to the fabric, the fabric immediately goes into the finishing oven 
where the fabric is uh, heated up to between 300 and 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're trying to do to the fabric is we're, we're drying the fabric and we're also heat setting the fabric, setting in uh, characteristics of width and weight on the fabric. And at the same time, any of the solvents, particularly with the edge gum, when it was a solvent-based uh, product, uh, that would flash off in the, uh, in the oven at those temperatures and would be carried out and emitted to the atmosphere. And then, uh, so basically anything volatile, any haps, uh, we assume that they're all emitted right there in the tenor frames uh, in the finishing process. And then after that, the fabric goes to a cooling zone and then it goes to inspection and is rolled up for f and taken to further, further processes. You can see the edge gummy here on this fabric. Uh, this is an intimate apparel fabric. Um, poly nylon, but um, you can see the, the gum right there and uh, is delivered onto the fabric on right before the tenor frame. And uh, in the past that was done with a solvent carrier and then the solvent flashed off. Now it's done with a water-based carrier and the gum is, is put on there and, and the, the water evaporates out in the tenor frame, leaving the gum. And it keeps the fabric from curling after the uh, selvage is, is cut off. When we made the change from the solvent-borne edge gumming system to the water-based edge gum system, it greatly reduced our VOC emissions and also our HAP emissions. Uh, the VOC emissions of this particular plant were reduced by probably 80 to 120 tons per year. HAP emissions were uh, reduced probably 10 to 20 tons per year. Uh, and that change alone is really what helped us to be able to avoid uh, major threshold status here at this at this plant. At the pin dye and finishing plant, the types of dyes that we use are primarily uh, acid dyes for nylon type fabrics, um, dispersed dyes, and basic dyes. We, we primarily uh, dye and finish nylon, polyester, and spandex fabrics here at, at the pin dye plant. Um, the dyeing processes that we use are we have uh, both beam dye machine and jet dye machine, dye, dye machines, uh, and also atmospheric and pressure dye machines. We have um, the beam dye machines, the fabrics are actually uh, rolled up onto a large beam, and then the entire beam is uh, put into the dye machine. We have uh, both pressure and atmospheric dye, beam dye machines. The jet dye machines, the fabric is put into the dye machines in rope form and circulates through the, the dye bath. And we have uh, pressure dye machines that are, that, are, that are the jet type dye machines. When we made the changes to our chemicals that we were using in order to reduce HAP content, uh, it did not impact the quality of our fabric. And in fact, that was a requirement that it could not. Um, obviously, we've got to meet our customers' uh, requirements and expectations. Uh, concerning hand and soil release and flammability uh, or, or uh, flame retardant qualities and those are, are things that we absolutely have to continue to meet in order to keep the business. So we had to, the changes that we had to make, that we did make, uh, we first had to do it as a trial. We had to run it through the plant, uh, make sure that it was not going to impact quality of the final product. And uh, in, in all cases, um, I don't think we ever had a case where uh, we couldn't make a change because it was unacceptable consequences on the, on the other end. We um, were able to, uh, we were successful in all the, the changes that we made. Of course, we uh, were very careful and only did changes that we thought had a real good chance of, um, of, of being successful. But uh, in all cases, we did not impact the, uh, the quality of the final product. In order to make the changes that we have to go to the lower hat uh, type of finishing uh, chemicals, we have not had to make any capital improvements to the plant at all. We did it all through product substitution and reformulation of the, the, the dyes and chemicals that we're using at the plant. In the process of changing to the lower hat type of dyes and chemicals that we've uh, changed to, the main barrier that we had uh, to the reformulations and the substitutions were, were uh, the, uh, the worry and the concern that the new products were just not going to work, that uh, 
that we were going to uh, get in trouble with our customers, that we weren't going to be able to perform as we were before, especially uh, when going to the water-based uh, edge gumming material. There was a lot of uh, hand wringing and worry over that. Um, but we, we worked through that. We, we did it carefully. We had to involve the, the production uh, people, the department managers, the technical people. Uh, we let them go at their pace and uh, let them get comfortable with the whole idea, run trials, uh, just be very methodical and careful about what we were doing, and let them gain the, uh, the confidence and, uh, and, and feeling good about that the change was not going to impact their uh, ability to produce the quality they needed to produce. And so it's just a process of working through that and being patient with that and understanding and hearing their concerns and, and addressing concerns they had and just involving them in the whole process. I believe that the savings that we're going to see by avoiding the uh, Fabric Mac are probably in the tens of thousands of dollars a year just in uh, avoided uh, my time, uh, consultants time, uh, just in record keeping, reporting, paperwork uh, time. Uh, I believe it's got to be in the tens of thousands of dollars per year. That's just a guess, but uh, uh, that's what I think is we're going to avoid. We found that the waterborne edge gumming material was just as effective as the solvent borne edge gumming material, and we did not have to uh, change our process at all. We did not have to slow down our line speed. We did not have to add any, uh, any drying capacity. In fact, that was a requirement along with the quality requirements that we couldn't impact the quality of the fabric. We also couldn't impact production. We had to be able to keep production at the same levels and uh, so that was one of the concerns also that we had to work through, but we were able to show that uh, the, this waterborne edge gumming material was uh, allowed us to, to keep everything at the same level as far as production was concerned also. The waterborne edge gumming materials and the other materials that we use uh, now, the reformulated products, the products that we've substituted, have had no impact on other areas uh, like as far as our wastewater treatment plant, um, that's something we have to watch carefully, but uh, these products have not had impacts on any other area. It's, it's helped the air emissions, uh, our air emissions area, and has not impacted any other area negatively. Other pollution prevention techniques that we use in the plant are uh, we have best management practices for um, trying to avoid overuse of chemicals and spillage and uh, things like that. We also try to keep drums uh, and tanks covered uh, as much as possible um, and other things like that. We try to reuse uh, any, any dyes and chemicals uh, that we can, any finishes that we can, we try to reuse those to avoid uh, to, as a part of a pollution prevention, prevention activities. We did look initially at the, uh, what it would take to install control devices to uh, reduce HAP emissions and VOC emissions, and it was very evident that that was going to be very expensive and just very cost prohibitive. So for us, the, the only thing that made sense at all was source reduction uh, through reformulation and product substitution. In my opinion, the, the best uh, route to go for trying to meet uh, the obligations of the Fabric Mac and also of avoiding a possibility of the Fabric Mac are to look at reformulation and product substitution. Uh, at least in our case, in our processes, that is the answer that we've come up with. Um, there are some, some products, of course, a lot of products that we don't produce and so I, I can't answer that for everybody, but I would, I would uh, say that it, certainly uh, the economics favor looking at product substitution and reformulation because add-on control devices are so expensive uh, and uh, there's not a lot of profits or margin in the textile industry, so it's uh, very difficult to come up with money for add-on control devices. In my opinion, that's, that's the place to look is uh, reformulation and uh, product substitution.